of Curitiba. And our presentation is going to be about the corruption in the Brazilian government and corruption as a whole and how it affects us and how we can change that.
Each year, it's estimated that 50 and 80.5 billion dollars are stolen. Um, to scale from one to five, Brazil is rated up number four for corruption. Five in the world. Um, most, the majority of the people who live in Brazil thinks that the government is way um, corrupt and they want a change. And Brazil is the one of the ten most um, tax rates, which means when you want to buy a pair of Nike shoes, they're going to be heavily in um, taxes because they want to get more money from you and exclude those items. Yeah, um, something that can show these taxes. In Sao Paulo, um, maybe people from Sao Paulo don't know, there's an impostometer that um, it counts how, how much money it rides um, per year. Like every year it starts from zero. Um, the government is getting from taxes. So the, the amount of money that is stolen by the government from the people yearly corresponds to 2.3 of the annual GNP of Brazil, which is a really high number. And Brazil being among the 10 highest income taxes of the world is something that shows a lot of discrepancy in the Brazilian uh, society because we are among the worst countries in human development. So um, for us to be able to do something against corruption to make people aware of what's happening to fight against it, um, we had to create our name. So we created a brand, it's Youth Voice Against Corruption Brazil. And, um, well, in our gin elective at school, um, this is how we decided to do corruption. There were many different topics, and corruption always kept coming up because it was something that caused many of the global issues, like problems in Brazil, like education and poverty, that we were talking about. So, um, social media was a really big um, thing, a big tool for us to use um, to spread the word and to contact people. And I don't know if anybody knows, but the Global Youth Against Corruption, that's a website. Um, it's an organization, it's an NGO, that it has many activists online that um, participate in it. And um, we just contact them and we talk about them. And I asked, um, what, not me, like people from our group, everybody, we try to contact everybody um, from this group. And we asked them, um, what are the tools for us um, to um, fight against corruption. What, how can you help us? And we, we also created a Facebook page. We talked to from people, from, people from Paraguay, Argentina, Abu Dhabi, China, um, from like all over the world, because we really wanted to create something that was not, that was not only going to affect our community, but would actually um, have a global impact. Um, then our Facebook page, um, we created one so people could keep posted about um, everything that was going on here in Brazil. And we, we post um, recent news about the types of corruption that we explained, the nepotism and all, and um, the protests that were happening in June in Brazil. And in one week we got 102 likes in our Facebook page, Youth Voice Against Corruption. Just look it up if you guys wanna wanna follow. I think you have access to Facebook on the Wi-Fi with Google Wi-Fi. And something else that really highly inspired us do, in doing our project was the the protests that were going on in Brazil. I think all of you have had access to it because it was all over the news. And I went to the protests, but some people couldn't go because their parents didn't allow them because they think it's dangerous and everything. And the like how much we wanted to be there fighting against corruption is what made us create this because if we can't go to the streets then let the streets come to us and, and let us spread the word and i went to the protest and one thing that really inspired me to be active in this project was that for the time i was in in the streets and participating in the protest there were not um Christians or non-Christians, black, white, Indians, or homosexuals or not, everyone was just Brazilians, and all of them were fighting for a common cause. Yeah, um, something like these protests that um, inspired us, they, what we think happened, they simply stopped after the, the, like, after the mid of July. So, like, one month and a half, the Brazilians fought, but then we stopped, so, which was in our video. 
So we want to try, and like, there are minor um, protests in the streets happening, but nothing like the ones that we had in Rio or in Sao Paulo and uh, the music audience and all. So we, we really want to make people, we want to go there again. We want to continue fighting until we actually have great, like, really good results. And um, this, like, as you see, the social media was really important for us, uh, for our project on the Facebook page and the Global Youth Against Corruption. And in our community, we put the video on a monitor in the hallway and pe uh, with our video. And people actually stopped and they actually realized. So we, they actually, they're actually going to know what corruption is. And now they know it's something that's, that is really, really bad and affects Brazil in many negative ways. We have also been doing this sales in our community with, um, at least once a week we do bake sales, and we have also been selling these. Yeah, I have a logo. And um, doing the bake sales, we actually did them, like we sold cupcakes and all, um, and named them like Cupcakes Against Corruption. And like to attract people. <laughs> <laughs> um, to attract people. And so, and we put facts, like, with, like posters, um, about it, like, one billion reais every year is used in bribes, and bribe is a type of corruption, as you saw. So um, we actually we got people to, to um, cupcakes and all um, to be able to know what corruption is in the And also, we one thing that we talked a lot a lot about is that sometimes, like because we have access to all the good stuff that Brazil has to offer, like. <laughs> the private health system, the private school, we go to a really good school, and because we live in good houses and everything, and we have food every day, sometimes we fail to see the reality of other people. And that's what we want to expose up and above all, is that like, we are here today, but some people are, some children are in the streets trying to get money and, and food. Some people stop studying to get money to take to their parents because their parents just can't work because they, they have no education, they, know, they don't know how to read or write. So we want to not only fight against corruption, but also bring awareness to people that we live this good life, but that's not like this for everyone. Yeah, um, in front of our school, right across the street, there's a public school, and we, it's, it's really different from our school. I, I, we have like a big area two soccer fields, and they don't have that. And um, it's really sad because we see the kids going to school, and it, they're really poor, and it's really sad. And some people, some staff that works there, like the cleaning people, um, maintenance, they're all super nice, and they have kids that study in the school. And at our school, we also have the scholarship students, that some of them are, like, we, they give them scholarships by being athletes, and we get to know them better, and they're different from us because they like they don't have the access to good health. Now they do to education, but they're the other. Their friends or their sisters or the others that don't, and it's just really sad. So it's with different. yeah, and with our project, we wanted to we wanted to show that education can bring different people to the same level, and. One of our main goals for the next semester is to work with the public school that is across the street of our school. And we want to teach them a little bit about corruption and show them that they can make a change. And now we're going to split up into some groups to talk about what we just learned. Alright, so we have Kaylin, Papa, I'm Andrew, and then...